Hisune Tomasa-tan might end up having the most pure stuff out of any other anime this year. Modern JSDF politics, magical cataclysmic super dragon, World War II history, ancient Shinto rituals, workplace sexism, lesbian grandma, transforming dragon planes, war, moyo, government regulation of romance, and that's just off the top of my head, folks. These 12 episodes are packed to bursting with all manner of subjects, concepts, and ideas. A lot of them really good, some of them pretty bad. It still ended up being one of the very most entertaining viewing experiences for me of the whole year. It's a wild ride that's an utter blast, but that doesn't mean there isn't still criticism to be made of it, and in particular I'd like to pick apart the show's concerning portrayal of and seeming stance on sexual harassment. It is just about an undeniable fact that Hisomaso angles itself to be exploring the subject of women in the workplace. The first character arc of one of the show's primary characters, Hoshino, is explicitly tied up in her experiences with sexism. Unlike all the other D-pilots, she insists upon referring to her dragon as a jet, and denying that it's a living being with any agency. She forces it to remain in its transformed mode, even when doing so is uncomfortable for her dragon and out outright dangerous. This is because there's never been a female JSDF fighter pilot, and she wants to prove that women are up to that task. She joined in order to prove that, but instead got shuffled off to this dragon program. But that isn't even close to the whole of it. The JSDF, as a military organization, is of course pretty male-centric, and comments about women, be they sexual in nature or merely about their aptitude, are very frequent throughout the series, sometimes eliciting complaints about that behavior from Rem the female officer. The government actively regulates the romantic lives of the D-pilots to prevent them from falling in love because, quote, only by falling into a state of emotional dependency with the dragon can they truly connect with it. In the ritual to calm the ancient dragon, one of the shrine maidens sacrifices herself, and that's referred to in sexual terms, as the maiden marrying the dragon and sleeping in his bed with him, and then later as, quote, feeling unbelievably good, even better than sex. And you know, that makes it pretty disturbing that lesbian grandma's girlfriend gets a bury your gaze ending by being that sacrifice, because she's forced to marry and metaphorically fuck a male-coded dragon, but as I said, there's a lot of ideas at play here, let's stay focused. The point here is that there were so many different things set up that all dealt with how a traditionally male workplace treats the women entering into it and how women's romantic agency is policed by society, that in spite of that treatment of its women often being wince-inducing, I thought it would be in service of making a point on that topic about how such treatment is an issue. I mean, listen to this quote. Members of the JSDF or not, they're women first, and a woman's job is love. Surely that would be set up for a statement by the series on this topic. But it just… never really says anything about it? Legitimately, it doesn't reach a conclusion on any of these ideas, provides no resolution to them, and so we're left to just sort of assume that it's bad to be creepy and sexist because the girls don't like it when it happens? Is what I would be saying if the series didn't make one crucial mistake. You see, because it fails to take a stance on this subject, Hisomaso ends up inadvertently endorsing it because of one character, Saito. His first exchange with Hoshino ends up being blatant sexual harassment, and the series ends up rewarding him for this by having him and Hoshino end up together romantically. Let's break it down. It's night, he and his friends see Hoshino exit a restaurant on base by herself. He approaches her and refers to her as Edu-chan, which causes her to shrink back and tense up because jumping to a first name basis like that with the Chan is a pretty informal and impolite way to address your coworker. It'd be like introducing yourself to a new employee and referring to her with a pet name when you do so. He tauntingly says, oh, I see you've already been drinking, and puts his hand on her shoulder, causing her to tense up further, and says she should join them for another round of drinks. She starts to object, but he cuts her off before she can voice those objections, and, getting closer to her, says, We should get to know each other better. When expressing the sentiment that this was clear sexual harassment previously, I've encountered some resistance, but this is undeniable. Zaito approaches a woman who's alone at night, refers to her condescendingly, puts his hand on her when she is clearly uncomfortable with him doing so, and starts propositioning her sexually. Let's get to know each other better is a very well-established flirting line. Saying that makes his sexual intentions clear. He interrupts to prevent her from voicing her discomfort with the situation and has a friend there with him. 
This is a very scary position to be in as a woman. And then, if all that wasn't enough to convince you of his intentions, after she walks off, Zaito says, Do you know how to cultivate prideful chicks like her? You've got to thoroughly and completely break their spirits. I mean, I'll give the show some credit. Referring to pickups as trying to cultivate and break the spirit of women captures the way the locker room talk on this stuff often sounds, but again, it rewards this attitude. Throughout the series, Saito continues his very heavy flirting with a co-worker in their workplace, mind you, even though Hoshino expresses visible discomfort in the face of that. However, at some point, she finds herself getting endeared to him, finds herself getting endeared to that behavior of his. It isn't just that the series excuses Zaito's sexual harassment of Hoshino, no no no, it actively portrays that as being attractive to her, as working on her romantically. Don't worry fellas, if the girl you're trying to flirt with doesn't like it, keep going, she's just being tsundere about it. That is legitimately what the series ends up saying. And you're a naive idiot if you try to pull a don't inject your western political perspective into it, thank god Japan doesn't have all these crazy SJW feminists on this argument of mine. Only a month ago, an advisor of Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said that men should be allowed to grope women on the train. Literally. To quote, The deepest suffering belongs to the men who are plagued with the symptoms of train groper syndrome, in which his hand automatically moves when he steps on a packed train and catches a whiff of a woman. Repeated offenses show that it is an uncontrollable urge stemming from the brain. Shouldn't society protect and reserve their rights to grope women? That is not a satire piece. This was not published in a comedy magazine. These are actual comments made by an actual advisor to the actual political leader of actual Japan, and they, understandably, made headlines over in Japan. Westerners are not the only ones who would be able to see the issue with this. Japan has feminists and feminism. Japan has people who also take issue with this stuff as they should, and to assert that they somehow don't is an orientalist myth perpetrated by a mix of imbeciles and frauds. In a country where people in power say things like that, in an anime industry where Yamakon, who has said that he'd quote, have to hold himself back from doing sexual harassy things to a voice actress, can get new film projects of his funded and produced, series that don't even just make light of sexual harassment and assault, but actively teach their audience that that's how you can win girls over are an issue. They're an issue because they propagate deeply harmful ideas that are demonstrably doing active harm over in Japan. And frankly, anime needs to be criticized for how much it plays into this. The suit designer in Hisomaso fondles Hisone and makes lewd comments to her the first time they meet, falling into the creepy but technically justified dude archetype that's depressingly an actual established gag in anime. Technically, he's just sizing her up for her suit, but he's doing it in a manner that literally fits the legal definition of sexual assault. Just this year, we've had him, the trainer in Uma Musume feeling up the girls' thighs, the coach in Hanebato weirdly caressing the girls' hands, and many others. If if you can't see how a mass amount of media normalizing and in some cases actively endorsing harassment like this is an issue in a country where the things that I outlined are actively happening, then I'm sorry, because I'm blind without my glasses and yet your eyesight is far worse than my own. This is certainly a topic that could use exploration far beyond the confines of what I could provide in one of these quick videos, but it's a conversation I really wanted to get started and I'm happy to have done so here. Patreon pledges are of course much appreciated given that YouTube and its audience often isn't too appreciative of this perspective. And a massive thank you goes out to Psyker, Mathwiz97, Jonathan Conley, Tyler Monk, Tincho37, Lord Liquid Bacon III, Elaine Aldfelt, David McCown, His Short Dog, Smokeweed Sephiroth420, JMAM4747, Jedi168, Peach Plum, Chase Sutter, Manjibutt, and everyone else who's supporting me on there already.